All right, here we go. Back at Titan Machine Tool, working on these Acme threaded turnbuckle things here. We're over at milling them now, all right? So I got some done. We milled one side. I wish I had tool change. You'd get a lot more done in one setup, but I ain't got tool change, and I'm not changing the tool because I like to just throw them in and let it go. So we got one operation going on here with regards to the milling. I got that over here set up, but I'll show you what I'm doing first because the, the parts come out long. They cut extra long so that I got extra to hold on to when I'm turning them. They were all saw cut. I got all this extra material here that I don't need. So because they're saw cut plus or minus an eighth or so or whatever, I want to kind of like put a line on them so I know where to cut them in the saw. So I just come in with the, uh, I just come in with a parting tool here. And I basically, I'm just scribing a line. I do this while the machine's running. The machine's not running now, so that I could demonstrate what I got going on here. But I basically just put that on there, that scribe mark, so I see where to cut. And I take them over to the saw. And I get them in the saw over here. So now I know where to cut them off at right there, because I got my scribe line. So I got them in the vise on the saw. And we're grabbing on the inch and a half up front over there. But the center line, of the, 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 the pressure point of the vise is right here and this jaw can float so that she can cut it on angles. So you can't just squeeze the vise over here holding just that little bit in the front and not expect this thing to want to do this. So you got to support the back end because the shank of the part is only three quarters of an inch the big body of it up there is inch and a half. So we're grabbing on the inch and a half, but the back of the jaw has got nothing to grab over here. So we stick this block in it. That's an inch and a half block, just to take up the space here so that the jaw don't rack, because the jaw would rack big time and it would never hold the part tight. So we'll get this baby cutting. This is what I'm using for a saw blade. I leave my ticket on it so I know what I, I want to buy next time buy that right from McMaster. So we'll get this guy cutting over here, cutting off all that extra. We cut him long. Well, actually, the customer provided the material. So he brought him to me long. So now we're gonna let the saw cut that extra off right there. And we'll come back over here, we'll start this up and let this baby go. I got this program to cut down the middle twice. And then down the side, over, and back that way. a Couple times, finish pass, so that it looks decent. Same tool, does it all. That's what we're using there. That's a homemade Jabba, but that's a Iskai Gila Mill. Floor insert tool. I got jaws that I made to grab it. I'd show you with them open, but I need two hands to load the part, and I'm holding the, the foam, so you can see right there. My solid jaw. I cut a V in it. I cut that V so that I can hold on the diameter. Floating jaw is flat, but the solid jaw has got the V so it locates at the same height up and down this way every time. That's my st table stop. I, I bump up the up against the edge of the part right there. It's held in the V that whole entire length. And that sticks out, and we're gonna mill that off. And when we're milling it, it does chatter. Even though uh, three quarter inch shank that we're holding on to is pretty robust, it chatters a little bit. So I stacked up some blocks over here. I got a one, two, three block underneath that's really not, that is the fat finger again. It's not really one, two, three, but essentially that's what it is right there. And then I got the V block right there but I couldn't get the perfect stack height, so I grabbed a couple pieces of shim, found what fit in there nicey nice. So this is this is tight. I put the V-block in, I pull the V-block up, and then I slide the shims in. And I gotta finagle them to get them in there, so I know the, the cumulative stack up height is pretty close. This block is, it's in there, it's pretty good, it's got some pressure on it. So now when the tool comes over and cuts the top, it doesn't chatter at all. I can do it without it, but on the last pass, I get a, a smoother finish with no chatter. 
So we're gonna run it, turn the spindle on. We're running just shy of a thousand RPMs. One inch tool, four inserts. 4140 HT material. Let's get the spray coming out. Doesn't like to come out, needs a little persuading sometimes. And then we're gonna run it. Here we go. Well, let me let me hit pause there. Put my glasses on. These chips are smoking hot when they come out. So here we go. I may have to stand back. I need to add best the shield. That's like seventy-five thousandths, I think. Yes, first pass, 75 thousandths. There again, this thing could really take a, a good chip, but I don't want to beat the hell out of it. I don't want it chattering. I want to be able to walk away and go do something else. See, while this is running, I'll go over the, to the lathe, scribe another piece, go over to the saw, load the saw, get another one cutting. While this thing's pussyfooting over here, making purple chips. probably time for a set of inserts to be changed, but I only got a couple left to see if we can get through with this first set of inserts. And then when I flip them over and do the other side, I'll, I'll put some freshies in there. Alright, so I take three passes down the middle. The tool's wide enough to where we're at 200 deep now. So I went 75, 75, and 50, so we're at minus 200 now. We're running at 5 inches a minute, about 950 RPM, 975. So that material is inch and a half. We want that surface to be the same height as the diameter of the Acme thread, so that's 750. So inch and a half minus 750 is 750 divided by two, so that's 375 on a side. The material was a little bit under, it was like 1.495, so we're looking at like 372 and a half off each side-ish, give or take a little bit. It's not that critical. Just so long as it's close to being on center and we end up with a finished width of 750 when we're done. So I'm taking 50 thou per pass. And we're at minus 300 now. Show you the inserts that this thing's running too. After I think they're like eight APKTs or something like that. Damn! Ooh. I want to stand in the zone of the chips. These are hot. See, 
See, even with the vibration of that cutter, that block moves around a little bit. It's not in the same spot it was when I started. So that harmonic vibration causes that stack up of blocks to dance around a little bit. I just kind of got to keep an eye on them, make sure they don't slide out. You can hear the cutter. I walked away from it and I heard the I heard the shims fall out. And you can definitely hear the difference in the cutter when it's not supported in the V. Boy, those chips are hot. I can smell my skin burning. Look at those chips. Purple. Purple chips. So this is only this is like a cleanup pass. It's like three or four thousands. Yes, time is money, I know. Oh my god, you take so long. How can you stay in business? It's a, it's a struggle. Last pass. You know, even on this, taking two thousands on a real light finish pass, and that be blocks underneath there, it chatters a little bit. The noticeable difference in the finish when it's supported and unsupported. It, and then it just positions to get out of the way. Spray mist off, spindle off. That's pretty smooth. Good enough. I'm gonna put a big honking three quarter inch hole in the middle of it anyway, so there's really not gonna be a whole lot of material left when it's done. I can take it out. Take my stack up of blocks out of here. Take it out of the vise. And I'll show you the jaw with the vise open. And there, so, just aluminum jaws, soft jaws. I use them for something else. That's why it's got those nachos in it. But I cut that V in it, that way I can load them in there. Don't damage the threads. Repeat to the same center line pretty much every time. All right, so, oh wait a minute, let me see if I got those inserts. Uh, where are they? Uh, I don't have them out, but there it is. That's it, Titan Machine Tool done for the day. Almost 15 minutes in, these videos are too long. Too long. I need to speed up my speeds and feeds to get things done faster. Sign our.